Maybe I got kicked out of the house so the patient would experience a sense of mastery, a feeling of being in control, because she's not in control of her eyesight, she's not in control of her hearing, but she at least could be in control of that obnoxious person who came into her living room. I don't know, I don't know. But you see, as humans, we are given the capacity to reflect. It sure doesn't always look good, but if it's all good, then I want to know, how could this be good? How can I open up my perception wide enough to see the goodness, to see the wisdom, to see the gift in what just happened? Now, I'm not talking about the good of the cartoons, uh, the good of Hallmark cards. I'm talking about soul nourishment. I'm talking about depth of life. You know, castor oil taken all by itself is no big joy. But ultimately, if you administer it correctly, it can be a good remedy. Life doesn't always look good at first glance, and that's my experience. It can be pretty messy, yeah? It can be scary sometimes. It can be frustrating or puzzling. And because we've been given the ability to hang in there, the ability to wonder and reflect and call back what just happened, we can find the lesson in those icky, mucky moments. Instead of going to the garage door over and over again like the dog, we may be inspired to try something new, to be creative so that the next time we enter into a potentially difficult encounter with that person, we can use our power of wisdom and discernment to respond. I'm sure you've heard of Dante's Inferno. I mean, there are probably nightclubs named Dante's Inferno, and I'm sure there are video games named Dante's Inferno. But the real McCoy, the real Dante's Inferno, was a work that was written in the 14th century by Dante. Now, there's something to chew on there. You know, it's some intellectual stimulation. It's pretty stimulating stuff, pretty interesting material. This amazing piece of literature that comes from a larger body of work called the Divine Comedy. It's actually about the process that a soul goes through at the end of life, either into paradise, purgatory, or the inferno. And Dante called it a comedy. I just think that's funny that he called it a comedy. Um, it's not a comedy, obviously, like, you know, I Love Lucy. It's a comedy. In, in those days, a comedy w meant something that was... Um, turned out good, you know, and it was not as uh, deep or it wasn't something that you chewed on so much. It was like uh, actually called vulgar because it, it turned out to be an upbeat sort of thing. Um, the reverse of that is a tragedy. So if the work was sophisticated and it causes you to think, then it's considered a tragedy. So life, if we use the 14th century Italian criteria that Dante used, and we use a unity perspective, life is a comedy. Because life turns out, right? Life works out. If you have the perspective, if you open up the scope, if you open up the vision and realize there's this great big jewel of life in front of us and all I know is a tiny little facet of it. But if I open my vision, I see that there's more to it than what I can see all by myself in my little moment, in my little story. Not always rip-roaring laughter, but a belief in things working out for good. A happy ending, if you will. It's all good. And yet, as we humans wrestle with the appearances of pain and misfortune, we don't always live in the comedy. A few weeks ago, we talked about Haiti, you know, and I wasn't able to be here last week, but I noticed that Steve put a box, Reverend Steve put a box out front. And the purpose of that box, for those of you who um, weren't here, there are three nurses and a pharmacist that I work with at hospice, and they're going to Haiti in a couple of weeks. And I just thought, wow, what a great way to contribute, because it's, this isn't just writing a check to somebody I don't know. This is sending practical things, like Gloria mentioned a little bit earlier. So next Sunday, March, I believe it's March 7th, um, is the deadline because they are going to take whatever it is that we donate and they are going to wrap it up and then they have to you know, weigh it and package it and take it with them on their trip to Haiti next month. So I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm inviting you, if you have not yet you know, brought in, they're asking for adult vitamin, I mean, excuse me, adult aspirin, children's aspirin, uh, powder formula, Band-Aids, um, baby bottles, any of those things that you can get, a, get 
one thing or get two things and just put it in the box out there, okay? You know, this, this poverty of Haiti is causing us to step forward. It's causing us to reach out from our own experience and to extend a hand to someone whose facet of the big jewel is a difficult one right now. I mean, horrible one for them right now. It's hard to say sometimes when you see that. It, it's all good. You know, it's all good. But our response and our desire to be helpful and to recognize and remember that we're connected to them, that's good, right? Isn't it? So the process of being involved and connected is good. Just the other day, I heard about a spiritual teacher. A friend of mine is studying. The teacher's name is Abraham. And the friend and I were talking about things being all good and how there are moments when saying that to someone can be hurtful and not helpful, to say it's all good when somebody's struggling. There are these shadowy, doubtful times that are important in our spiritual maturing nonetheless. So she mentioned this term contrast, and I found that very interesting as a, an idea, not good or bad, not dark or light, you know, but contrast. So a photograph of a polar bear, you know, in the snow, in a snowstorm, y you know, y you can't see it. You can't see anything beyond, you know, a couple of button eyes and a and nose maybe. Um, but contrast helps us to appreciate the fullness of the picture, the fullness of the jewel, the fullness of the experience. Without some kind of contrast, you just see a couple of dots. And that's what the big picture person, like we are, strives to do, right? Don't we all strive to see beyond the little picture into something bigger, something to hang on to? The moment in front of us is a real experience, a contrast in our maturing process. So when our best friend is going through one of those difficult times, it might be cruel to say, hey, it's all good, just a little contrast, man. <laughs> Rather, we might say, I mean, that you know, that's kind of spiritual abuse, isn't it? To say, you know, well, it's all good. It's, it doesn't feel really good right now. And to, the most loving thing you can say to another person is, I'm sorry that it's so hard right now, you know? And how can I support you today? And to ourselves, we might even say, wow, bummer. Sometimes I ask myself, is there a mantra to hold on to? Is there something that I can remember when I can't see the light? Beyond, it's all good, you know? Is there something substantial that I can tell myself? And there are several that I use from the scriptures. You likely will have some of your own. First, seek ye first the kingdom of God. You know, don't be worried about the small stuff. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Seek, think about God first. Put that at the forefront of your mind, the forefront of your soul. God first. And how about this? All things work together for, for good for those who love the Lord.